This is the GMATS 41. You are welcome to our practical physics class. In our previous class, I taught you how to plot your graph and of course how to evaluate the slope of the graph. Not only did I teach you this concept, but I gave you wonderful guiding principles, skills that you need in order to plot your graph quickly. In this video lesson, I'll be teaching you two wonderful concepts, interpolation and extrapolation, skills you need when handling physics practical experiments and of course, graphical works. These tools will help you to generate table of values, you know, get values even without carrying out your experiment completely. Think about a situation whereby you are choked up with time. Say you are seated for an exam and you didn't have time, okay, to carry out the whole experiment. You know, time is not our friend, okay? It doesn't wait for nobody. So you have to work hard to ensure you beat up the time. I'm telling you that the concept of interpolation and extrapolation will help you. And of course, that's the main reason why we are having this class today. We shall also look at general graphical analysis. Now you are done plotting your graph, there are some things that your examiner may expect you to evaluate from the graph. So we're going to look at some of these concepts. Is that okay? Now quickly we'll be going on into talking about interpolation and extrapolation. What does these two terms mean? Interpolation simply means getting a value between two other values. Why extrapolation means getting a value outside two other values. I am going to be quick to show you an example. Think about this. Let us assume that you're carrying out a simple pendulum experiment and then you are told that for a length of 10 cm, okay, that the period of oscillation, let's say, is 2 seconds. And then you are now told that for a length of 25 cm, the period of oscillation is, say, 8 seconds. This is just an assumption. What do you think would be the periodic time if the length were to be 15 cm? What would be the periodic time? Remember you've carried out the experiment to get a periodic time for this length, 10 cm. Get a periodic time for this length, 25 cm. Now, what would be the periodic time without carrying out the experiment, are you following, for a length of 15 cm? Interpolation would help you out. So in this case, you're going to see that T is equal to, we don't know, let's say X. Now observe that the X is between two values, 2 seconds and what? 8 seconds. So the process that leads to getting that value of X, since that unknown we are looking for is between two values, I'm using those two values to get the value of X which is between them. That process is called interpolation. What about extrapolation? I said we use it to generate a value that is outside, that is beyond two other values. Think about this again, I'm going to use this example, a length of 10 cm, you are carrying out maybe a simple pendulum experiment, and then the periodic time you obtained there was 2 seconds. Now you carried out another experiment for a length of 25 cm, and the periodic time is 8 seconds. Now, without carrying out this experiment next, for the value we're going to talk about now, if I ask you what would be the periodic time for a length of 1,000 250 centimeter for a length of 1,250 centimeter. It could be any value anyway. It could be for a length of 40 centimeter. What do you think would be the period? You don't know. So we call it x. Now you notice that this x is a value I now want to get outside these two and outside this eight. Are you following right? This value is not between two and eight. This process that will lead to my obtaining x here is called extrapolation. So remember, interpolation, you get a value between two other values or within two other values. Extrapolation, you get the value outside two other values that is beyond two other values. Like I said, these two concepts are very important concepts, wonderful skills you need. You can use them to complete your table of values. You can use them in answering some questions from your graph. That we shall see quickly now. I have this table of value. This table of value uh, was actually a table of value that I obtained from running an experiment to determine the mass of 
a meter rule using known masses. Take note, determination of mass of the meter rule using what? Known masses. When I carried out this experiment, for these positions, which we call V, the values of U I obtained, balance points, are you getting me right? Well, these values here, anyway, I only showed you two values. But actually, I got all the values I would like to read them out. When V was 20 cm, we had U to be 51.10 cm. And when V was 25 cm, U was 52.40 cm. For V, 30 cm, U was 53.80 cm. And lastly, for V, 35 cm, the value of U I obtained was 55.1 cm. So these are the values displayed, what I obtained for this. Now, I decided not to show them here. I have left these points, four of them empty. I just brought out two of the points, or two of the values I obtained for you during the experiment. The idea now is, I'm trying to show you how you can determine these other values using this one. The principle of interpolation and extrapolation will help you. And one thing is that the value you would get will much more be very correct. Is that okay? So please, let us quickly look at how we carry out this extrapolation to get the values that are left here. Is that okay? Now, let us extrapolate the U value for V equal to 20 centimeter. To do that, I will use these two values. Now, I want to say this, please. If you're considering using the idea of extrapolation to help you out quickly get your values, is that okay? I usually advise, please, carry out at least two experiments to get values which will help you to extrapolate the rest. Is that okay? Carry out at least two experiments to get values that will help you extrapolate the others. To get you corresponding to V equal to 20 cm, I'm going to use this 10 cm, 15 cm, which has U value of 48.2 and 49.50 cm. So we go. When V was 10 cm, U was 48.2. Uh, 2 zero is still the same as 0.2. Is that okay? Now, when V was 15 cm, U was 49.50 cm. If V now is 20 cm, what would be the value of U? I do not know. So from here, I can now solve for X. You see, this is extrapolation because the X value we are getting is outside the other two values we've, we've obtained for U already. So this is what you do. Watch as I proceed in solving it. We're going to work out 20 minus 15 all over 15 minus 10. Equal to, we'll come to this part of U and follow the same steps. Are you following right? X minus 49.5 all over 49.5 minus 48.2. If you want to work it out starting from up down, the choice is yours. Like 10 minus 15 all over 15 minus 10. The point is, whichever direction you take, make sure you follow the same direction in the other one. Since I move from down up, I will follow that pattern here as well too. So we go. So we shall solve for x here to get the value of u, which corresponds to v equal to 20 centimeter. This part will give us 1 already, okay? So 5 over 5, you get 1 if you work it out. Then we have x minus 49.5 all over. This denominator, if you subtract, you're going to get 1.3. So you observe that if you cross multiply this, you get that x minus 49.5 is equal to 1.3 times 1, cross multiplying, which is the same as 1.3. Making x of your formula, this will cross over, so you are adding it to this 1.3. Let us add and see the value we are going to get. 1.3 plus 49.5. This gives 50.8 centimeter. So this is the value of u when v is 20 centimeter. So all I have to do is to come over here and then fix 50.8. Let us compare this with the actual value we obtained from the experiment when V was 20 centimeter. And the value I obtained was 51.10. Now if you compare the 51.10 to 50.8, let us assume you are to approximate to the nearest whole number. You will notice that both of them are 51, 51 centimeter. So you see that even by extrapolation, the value I got is very close to the value I obtained from running the exper experiment. 
But funny enough, these would even seem to be more accurate. Because in the experiment, while I was carrying it out live, are you following, right? There are chances of error. Of course, we know there are several forms of error that we can encounter when carrying out a live experiment. It could be systematic error, it could be random error, as the case might be. So even in most cases, the uh, estimation process by calculation it will give you a better result. Anyway, let us move on to the next value. I'm going to extrapolate U value for V equal to 25 centimeter. So let us go. Talking about V equal to 25 centimeter, what is going to be the corresponding U value? Once again, you can use any two values you have up there. Are you following? Then extrapolate to generate this. Okay. I want to use these two values now. 15 and 20. The choice is mine. So 15 gave us 49.5. And then 20 gave us 50.8. What will be 25 centimeter give to us for you? We don't know. So once again, we follow similar pattern, 25 minus 20 over 20 minus 25, over 20 minus 15 rather, okay? Equal to x minus 50.8 all over 50.8 minus 49.8, 49.5. Let us solve this out and see what we are going to get once again. This part, 25 minus 20 all over 20 minus 15 will give us 5 over 5, which is 1. Let me work out the denominator here and see. We have 50.8 minus 50.8 minus 49.5. This again gives me 1.3. So if you cross multiply, you have x minus 50.8 equal to this 1.3 cross multiply. So we we'll multiply 1 here, you know. So you still have 1.3 there. And x is going to give us 1.3 added to 50.8. And this is 52.1 centimeter. So this is going to be the value of U when V is 25 centimeter. So I will fix that up here, 52.1 centimeter. Now let us compare this with the value obtained when I carried out this experiment like, okay? For V equal to 25 centimeter, U there gave me 52.4, 52.4 centimeter when the experiment was carried out. 52.4 centimeter and 52.1. Very close, right? Of course, it can go. And that is why I faced 52.1 there. So the same thing we do to obtain the other values. Are you getting me right? So you can work out the other values to get the value of U when V is 30 centimeter and to get the value of U when V was 35 centimeter by extrapolation. You know, with this, you get your value quickly and you'll be set to now plot your graph. Now, we are going to move on to how to carry out general graphical analysis. Please complete this and then try to plot the graph. Is that okay? And you can use this pattern of interpolation and extrapolation, like I said, to generate values, your readings, when you're carrying out your experiment. But before you do that, please remember that it's very important for you to have carried out the experiment and obtain at least two values. From those two values, you can extrapolate to get the other ones. We now want to talk about the general graphical analysis. In this area, you must have plotted your graph. Is that okay? So that's why I don't take plotting of graph for granted. It's very important. Even in getting your table of value, let us assume that you are able to run the whole experiment without interpolation or extrapolation as the case might be. Remember that for any experiment, there are instructions. It's just for you to follow the instructions and you will get your results. It's just like somebody telling you, go and get me a glass of water. You are not expected to go and start looking for, for a bottle of oil. You have to go for the glass of water. So that's just something about Experiment, you have the instructions that will guide you. So I don't even look at that area as anything much problematic since you'll be reading to follow along. But I think I've also given you a skill very important, interpolation and extrapolation that will help you generate a table of value, you know, quickly, as you may wish. Now, after you plot your graph, an examiner may decide to ask you to evaluate anything. So this is an area very important because you cannot read the mind of the examiner. And therefore, you must have an open mind to welcome whatever the examiner asks you to do. 
But here on the board, we have certain important points. And uh, shortly after now, you're going to see a display of a graph with an audio follow-up to guide you on what you'll be saying on the graph. Okay? But before that, let's quickly explain this concept we have here. Very importantly is your ability to calculate the error in slope. Error in slope, the formula is given as this. Delta S is the error in slope. Okay, that's the symbol I decided to use for error in slope. And it is equal to 4 times W divided by NR. Where W is the vertical scatter, N is the number of points. That's the number of points you plotted. Or simply the number of times you carried out the experiment. Is that okay? It's the same as the serial number of... Uh, your table of value, even if we don't show serial numbers, okay, in table of value anyway. The range is what R represents. In the graph, you're going to see, okay, all of these points, the vertical scatter and range will be shown on how you obtain them. Okay, having said that about error in slope, let's move on to error in any other quantity. Now, one can obtain the error in any other quantity by linking it to error in slope. And here we have this relationship. Error in that quantity divided by the value of that quantity. So it's expected that you should know the value of that quantity. Is equal to error in slope divided by what? Slope. Even talking about something like acceleration due to gravity, one can actually find the error in acceleration due to gravity. It will simply be error in acceleration due to gravity divided by the value of acceleration due to gravity you obtained for that experiment equal to error in slope all over the value of slope. Is it intercept? You can still use that relationship. Error in intercept divided by the value of intercept you obtain equal to error in slope divided by the value of slope. Of course, before then, you must have gotten the value of the slope and the error in slope using this formula. Of course, the rest is just simple calculation. Having shown you this important relationship used to obtain error in any other quantity related to error in slope, now, let us consider this general case, all right? Imagine that in an experiment, in the instruction, you have an equation given as this. And it is expected that you obtain the error in u. This is u equal to x raised to power a times y raised to power b times z raised to power c. You are expected to obtain the error in u. How do you calculate that? So we have this general formula for such case. To get error in u, it's going to be error in u divided by u equal to, come to this x, use the power of x, which is a, to multiply error in x divided by the value of x, then plus you add. Use the power of b to multiply error in y divided by the value of y. You can see that there. Then plus that of z, use the power of z, which is c, to multiply the error in z divided by z. That's the equation you use in solving such problem. But take note that before then, you must have gotten the value of u, x, y, and z. Definitely in the instruction, there must be a statement that will help you to know the value of these u, x, y, and z, or they may be given to you in the problem. So that you can be able to substitute there. The question would not be, okay, how do we get error in x, error in y, error in z? which we now need to substitute into this equation so as to calculate error in u. You see, why we are not linking error in u directly with error in slope? Why we are not linking it directly to error in slope is because u has its own formula from that supposed experiment. So the error in u has to be calculated from the error in the variables that it depends on. So our problem would be to get error in x, error in y, and error in z to substitute there so that we can get error in u. And this is where the error in slope now comes in, into play. Because to get error in x, y, and z, since there is no defined formula for them, are you following right? Uh, in, the, in the experiment, x is not equal to anything, y is not equal to anything, z is not also equal to anything. So to get error in them, what you have to do is to link them to error in slope. Which means to get error in x there, it's going to be error in x divided by x equal to error in slope over slope. And of course, you must have calculated the value of your slope and the error already. Okay, remember the error in slope, use this formula. So with this, you get the error in x. Do same for y. Error in y divided by y will now be equal to error in slope all over slope. And finally, you do same for z. Error in z divided by z equal to error in slope divided by slope. 
In which case, calculate the error in that variable and then substitute there. One can think of this quickly. Maybe let us assume a moment of inertial experiment and maybe you're given that I, moment of inertia, is equal to BH raised to the power 3 divided by 12. And you're asked to find error in the moment of inertia I. You cannot quickly relate it to error in slope. You don't do that. Why? Because I here depends on these variables, B and H. Therefore, you have to get error in I from the error in B and H. When you are doing that, this is over 12. Constant, we don't consider it when we are carrying out this calculation. So we could just keep it aside. Our interest would be in the powers and the variables. So to get error in this I, it's going to be error in I divided by the value of I, the moment of inertia, which definitely in the instruction, you must have been told how to obtain the I, then equal to error in B divided by B plus three times error in H divided by H. So from here, you can calculate the error in what? I. Now, where error in slope will now come in is when you want to calculate error in B and error in H. Because you need the error in B and H so as to substitute into this formula and calculate the error in moment of inertia. Don't forget that I use this power 3 to multiply error in H. Because in the given formula, H is raised to the power of 3. So, to get error in B, I can now say that, but error in B, but error in B divided by the value of B is equal to error in slope divided by slope. From there, you calculate error in B, which you would use inside this formula, okay? And similarly, error in H divided by the value of H is equal to error in slope divided by the value of slope. Once again, you calculate the value of error in H because you need it here. So you see how we linked or related these errors in the variables to error in what slope using this formula. Then once you do that, you've calculated their errors, you can now substitute into this formula to calculate the error in I because that I moment of inertia depends on those variables B and H. So that is what this is explaining. Is that okay? So it is time we're going to see the graph so that we can just carry out certain works and what we've explained briefly on general graphical analysis.